Airlines Europe, how to play. So we're playing stock investors, helping airlines expand their networks in Europe, investing in companies and earning victory points throughout the game. The first thing you'll do is lay out the board and you'll set up the initial stock companies on the board. Uh, there's 10 companies that get laid out on the board and then there's the one abacus company where you'll create a deck there of their 20 shares. The number on each card indicates a couple things. It's the number of shares that are available in the game. So the yellow company has 16 shares or 16 cards in the deck. It also indicates the number of airplanes that the company has available to them to expand routes throughout the game. So the white company has seven shares, but also only seven airlines to expand. So for each of the 10 starting companies, You'll place one token on their starting city, matching their color. And then you'll also place a token matching the color on the share value track on the board. Now, if it's less than a five player game, you will remove some of the companies. And you can see the cheat here. So the yellow company actually gets removed in a two, three, and four player game. The blue company gets removed in a two player game. And the purple company gets removed in a two and a three player game. So if you're playing with five or six players, you use everything. If you're playing with only four, take out this one. Only three, take out this one and this one. And if it's only a two player game, you'll take out all three of these. And what that means is you'll remove their city token off the board, their token off the track marker, and you'll actually remove all matching color cards from the deck. The next thing you'll do is lay out four special bonus uh, route tokens. So the four lowest value companies in the game, or actually they're highest on this track, but they have the fewest shares, green, orange, gray, and white. They have special route bonuses that can actually help them increase in value during the game. So for example, the gray company, if they can get from London to Ankara, Ankara is the destination city, Gray starts in London. Once they complete a route all the way to there, their share will instantly go up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it doesn't matter who completes it. Once it's done, that share, is, that bonus is earned. Next, you'll set up the starting bank. Um, I'm using chips here, but you can use the paper money that came in the game. You use 30,000. 30, or yeah, 30,000 euro uh, per player. Actually, I guess these are millions. So 30 million euro per player. Money's used throughout the game to actually help airlines expand their network. So to take this route would cost 4 million. So that's what you use your money for in the game. So 30 per player as a bank. You'll also set out your victory point chits. They're kept secret in the game, so you could turn them over. They're in 1, 5s, 10s, and 50s. Next, you'll create your starting deck. So if you're using all airlines, you wouldn't have removed any cards, but if you removed any cards, make sure you do that before you shuffle your entire deck. The only cards you're not going to shuffle in are the air abacus and the three scoring round cards. Every other share card in the game would get shuffled together to form a deck, and then you would draw the five starting stock certificates that get placed on the display. After that's done, you can deal every player eight starting cards, give them eight, eight million euros, and then you would randomly choose a start player, and the start player would get one victory point to start, and then going clockwise, uh, each subsequent player would get additional victory points. So the second player would get two, third player three, and so on. There is a variant. If you want to play with six players, you would actually deal six cards and maintain a six-card display in the market. And then to start the game, players would only be dealt six cards, not eight. Once all players have their starting cards, uh, chips and victory points 
every player will simultaneously choose two different shares to start their initial tableau. So this player would have to be different, could not both be red. I don't think I got a lot of red. So there, I found two different cards. If, uh, if in the rare circumstance a player has all the same color, they would have to draw to get a, a different color. But all players simultaneously select two shares to start their portfolio with. It's only shares that are actually in your portfolio and played in front of you that will count for victory points during scoring. The remaining cards that were dealt with you, uh, the other six in normal games, will get held in the player's hand. The last thing we do just before starting the game is seed the scoring cards into the deck now. So the display is ready. Every player has their hands. They've played them. Now we seed it. So you'll break your deck into three stacks. First, you'll start with just 10 cards. And then you'll take three quarters of the remaining deck and one quarter of the remaining deck. And that'll form your three piles. It, for the 10 cards, you're going to shuffle this scoring card in here. Mix those all together. Another card will go inside the middle of the three-quarter deck, and one will go on top of the three-quarter deck, and then this would go on top. So shuffle one into the final ten, put one into the middle and on top of the three-quarter deck, put that there, and then put the last quarter there. So you're going to have a scoring card that's coming out you know, roughly right after these first set of cards, then one in the middle, and then the final scoring card will be somewhere in the final ten cards of the deck. All right, let's cover each of the four actions in the game. So on a player's turn, play will proceed clockwise from the starting player, and they can do one of four things. The first action they can do is help an airline expand its network by buying airplane routes uh, for the company. Now it's important to remember you can expand, the player can expand any airline network on the board. They don't need to have shares played or cards in their hand. Players don't represent airlines. They represent investors into multiple airlines. So you have the option of buying one or two airline routes, and those can be in different airlines or the same airline. So if I decide to expand this blue airline, it has to expand out of its existing network. So if it already had one here, I could decide to buy this route or to keep expanding and to buy this route. You are required to purchase the lowest uh, value on the route, so I could not pay four and buy that one. I would have to pay three and do that one. Here, five's the lowest. So let's say I do that. I would pay five out of my personal money to help this network expand. Now keep in mind I can do one or two, so if I decide I could optionally expand the blue airline again or maybe I decide to expand the red again or I could just stick with one expansion. What happens is you're helping the airline grow. So whatever money you spent on the, the route, that share will go up that value. So this one went up five. One, two, three, four, five. So you've increased the value of the blue airline. Now, if I expanded blue twice, here and here again, it would go up an additional 5. So I could have increased it 10 on this turn by buying this network and buying this network. The last thing you'll do on your turn is you'll draw a card from either the 5 available on the display or the top of the deck. And you always only draw one card. It does not matter whether you built one or the optional second airline network. Once the card is drawn, it's immediately refilled from the deck, so we always have five in the display. And then two other points, you can never have multiple airplanes in the same route. So once blue has taken this one, blue cannot take this one. Now once another airline has taken this, then there are no more spots available in this route. They've all been taken up, they're limited. Also keep in mind, each airline is limited by its number of planes. So once its planes are depleted, it can no longer expand any of its networks. And then the last reminder, as we talked about, if an airline is able to complete its bonus connector, and that's eligible for the white, orange, green, and gray, London to Ankara, once that one got that one, they would immediately go up 
the indicated spots on the stock market track. So the next action that you can take is you can play cards from your hand to your portfolio. And remember, it's only shares that are in your portfolio that will count towards victory points during scoring. So you have two options. You can play two cards of different colors or as many cards as you'd like of the same color. So if you're playing different colored cards, you can play a maximum of two, red and a blue, or maybe this player had a lot of red cards and they're able to play all their red cards to their portfolio. For each card that you play, for, play to your portfolio, you will earn two million uh, euro from the bank. So two per card that you play, and that's one of the ways you can earn and get money back in the game. The next action to take is you can get Air Abacus shares. These are the 20 Air Abacus shares that were set aside at the beginning of the game. You can basically discard one card. It can be from your face-up tableau or from your hand, your choice. Discard one to get one Air Abacus card. Or you can discard three to get two Air Abacus cards. So again, the three discards can come from your tableau or your hand and then you take the air abacus card. Keep in mind, the air abacus card would go immediately into your hand. It does not get played on the board. Um, also, as a reminder, whenever you're drawing cards after helping an airline build its network, that card goes into your hand. The only way cards get on, into your portfolio is by taking this B action during the game. One other point, all discards that you do are face down, so nobody will see them. So you could even discard Air Abacus to get Air Abacus if you were trying to reduce the number of Air Abacus shares that were in the game. But all the discards to trade into Air Abacus cards are put in a face down discard pile. The last action you can take is to just get 8 million euro from the bank. And you would just take that from the bank and add it to your hand. So those are the main four actions in the game. Play will proceed clockwise with each player taking one of the four actions. Play will be interrupted three times during the game um, if and when a scoring card is drawn. So at the end of an A action, let's say a player built a network, they decide to take this card into their hand and a scoring card gets drawn. So we interrupt play. We'll give this scoring card to the player that triggered it, just so we know where play will proceed from. The stock market always gets replenished. Oops. Always, that wouldn't happen. Always gets replenished. Back to five. So you have five cards. And we're actually going to draw from these cards in the market now. So in turn order, starting with the player that triggered the scoring round, each player will take one card from the market. We do not redraw, so the second player may choose to take this one, third player take this one, fourth player takes this one. Um, if there are any remaining cards, like say we weren't using a, a fiber player game, those get discarded out of the game. So this is a way each scoring round to kind of refresh the uh, market. Once each player has taken their one, one card from the market, you discard the rest, you will replenish up to the five cards in the market, and now you're ready to score. So now you're gonna score each airline, um, do it in descending order, so we'd score the white airline first. So you'll see that the track has different colored bands that correspond to different victory point totals. So let's say the white was in here. Whoever has the most amount of white shares, it doesn't matter if they have only one and nobody else has any or they have you know all seven white shares it just matters who has the most scores the highest level victory point so the player with the most shares would get four second player two third player one and the fourth player would get zero in this case if there are ties you split the tied places um, and then round up so let's say there were two players tied for white you'd have six so they would each get three Let's say three players were tied for the most shares of white. You'd take four plus two plus one, so you'd get seven uh, divided by three, since there's three placings now. Um, so 
each player would get 3 because you always round up. So 7 divided by 3 would be 2 point something, and then you'd round up to 3. And you do that for each airline. So part of the game is getting an airline bumped to the next scoring level. And you'd go down and score every airline based on who has the most, second most, third most, and fourth most. And you'll see there's different points. And as it gets higher in the game, the victory points increase. In addition to scoring the airlines that are on the stock track, you're also going to score the air abacus three times during the game. During the first scoring, the player with the most air abacus cards in front of them will get four, second most two, third most one. And you can see the value of air abacus cards increases as you get to the third round. The player with the most air abacus cards gets 16 uh, points. Same rules apply if a player's tied. You'll sum the tied placings and then divide and then round up. Again, keep in mind, it's only cards that have been played to your portfolio that will count towards the majorities in each of the categories. Cards that are still in your hand do not get counted, and that goes for Air Abacus cards as well. Air Abacus cards, when they're traded for, go into your hand. They have to be played to your portfolio like all other cards. When you earn the victory points, you'll take them from the supply, and you can keep them face down so nobody's ever sure who's winning the game. And you can always exchange five ones for a five, or two fives for a 10, and so on. Once you've done scoring all the airlines and the air abacus, then play will resume. We'll discard this. And then the player, clockwise from this player, will take one of their four core actions. And we'll keep going until the second, and then finally the third, scoring rounds are triggered and you follow the same procedure with drawing a card and then scoring the airlines and air abacus. The game will end immediately at the end of the third scoring. Everyone will count up their victory points and the most victory points is the winner. If there's a tie, the player with the most air abacus shares in front of them breaks ties. There's a special scoring rule if it's only a two-player game. Um, for the third scoring only in a third-player game, you will score against a fictitious third player. You would basically take all shares that were discarded throughout the game, all shares in the market, and all shares in the draw pile, and that would form that player's tableau, and then you would compete for majorities against that third player and score accordingly. So basically that third player is going to be tough to beat because they're going to have all the discarded cards throughout the game, any cards remaining in the display, any remaining cards in the deck, and actually even any remaining air advocates cards. But that's only a variant for a two-player game. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Airlines Europe.